Mr. Seth Mitchell, thank you very much for returning to theboxingbar.com, and welcome, man. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Seth, the last time we talked, you had just come off a victory with Chaz Witherspoon. You told us how that went since then, in mid-November. You had a fight with uh, John Depp Banks. How did you feel going into that fight in November there? Uh, I felt great going into the fight. Um, had a great training camp. My health was fine. Felt very confident going into the fight. Um, it didn't turn out the way that I planned, but going into the fight, everything was on the up and up. Uh, you know, I was 100% mentally and physically and uh, just ready to go. But, um, you know, things wrong and, uh, and paid for. In your opinion, what was the first mistake you did in that fight? Um, I believe my, the mistakes that I made was just my being too aggressive and lunging and not judging my distance right. He was a mover, not judging my distance right. That was leaving myself open, uh, more open for his counter shots. When you were dropped there the first time, what, how did you feel? What were your reactions? What were you thinking at that moment? Um, it, I mean, it was a, a shot, a short chopping left hook to the temple. And so it just threw my equilibrium off a little bit. I wasn't necessarily like out on my feet or anything, but you know, when you got them cockways going a little bit and then he just, he did what he was supposed to do. He stayed, you know, on me and allowed me to grab him. And uh, he backed up and threw punches. And, you know, once you're already dazed a little bit, you know, when you get hit with another shot, you know, it doesn't have to be a hard shot for it to, you know, throw your equilibrium off some more and just get you in a worse predicament. And uh, and that's what Jonathan did during the fight. What would you say his biggest assets? Would you say he was a, a strong hitter? Would you say he was good at moving offense, defense, a little of both? Uh, Jonathan is a small fighter, but he's he's a counter puncher. You know, he he's not a, a real active fighter, but um, he knows what he's doing in the ring and he waits for his opponents to make takes to open up. And, uh, and he tries to catch you with a the big counter, but uh, so I think his best attributes are his ability to capitalize off your mistakes and um and counter you. That was your first loss there. How did you feel after that uh, after that fight and going back to the locker room? Did you know that you were gonna pick up the pieces and get right back up? Um, I mean, it was it was rough. You know, I'm not gonna say I, you know, I, I was hurting. You know, not not when I say hurting, I wasn't like doubting myself or anything. But it's just you know. The first time that you you ever lost, you know it's going to be a, a a rough rough moment for you. So that's how the how it was. And like the first you know two days, it was like disbelief. And then after that, you know it's like man, you you start to replay the stuff in your head, and um, it's, it's not a good feeling at all. It took me about a week to get over the fight. And the reactions of uh, everybody, like, let's say, all the media and stuff and what you might have read on the papers, did it kind of, you know, like, uh, motivate you in a positive way because maybe all the bad stuff they were saying? Um, I mean, it, I, I know that it's a part of the territory. You know, I don't get too high. I've always said before, you know, the things that the people are saying is because of what I'm doing in the ring. You know what I mean? And so I knew, you know, once, you know, you had a bad performance or you had a loss, the negative print was going to start to come out. and I mean, you have your haters anyway, so you can't really worry about a lot of people are saying you got it. When you're a professional athlete, you have to have callous because you, if you leave the hype, if you think, you know, everybody is, is with you, you know, once through a downfield, you know, you'll realize the truth. And, and, and if that's the type of person you are, it can really destroy a person. You know, so me, I, I just try to – and one thing that I did, I stayed away from the – from the from the papers, I do a lot of interviews and everything, and a lot of time I don't even you know read them. I have somebody else that's checking them out and and, and get, just making sure everything is you know written and said properly. But um, I don't read them too much, and um, after my loss, you know, I read them less, and um, I think that's how I I was able to you know stay cool and just surround myself around. I always surround myself around people that are that care about Seth Mitchell and not about Seth Mayhem Mitchell. And that's true, and especially in boxing, you know, I mean, it's most right. Uh, we judge people on how they bounce back. Um, Jonathan Banks, uh, after the fight, he said that his motivation was Emmanuel Seward's death, who he was close to. And do you think that was a big plus for him during that fight? I don't, I don't think so. I look at it like this. If I would have destroyed Jonathan Banks in the first round, what would people have said? He shouldn't even have taken the fight. Um, he had too much, a heavy heart, you know, he was, 
just flew down to Emmanuel Stewart's funeral. He he was doing too much. So I don't look at it like that. I mean, he did what he was supposed to do. If I had to walk through him in the first round, people would say, you know, he had too much on his plate. He wasn't prepared physically and mentally. He wasn't there at the fight. So I don't look at it like that. I just look at it as, you know, unfortunate. You know, the great Emmanuel Stewart passed during the time that we had the fight. And, um, you know, he came out there and did what he was supposed to do. That's how I look at it. Very, very true. You know, his thing is that that was his motivation. Now, what's your motivation coming into this next fight? Um, I mean, my motivation is just trying to get back on track where um, where I wanna where I wanna be. I I wasn't um, far off from a title shot. If you know that fight would have been successful, probably latter part of this year, I probably would have been fighting for a title. So I just wanna inch closer, you know, to that. Get this victory under my belt, and then sit down with my with my team and and go through that process again. But uh, I, I don't think Jonathan makes the better fighter than me. You know, he 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 got me, you know, November seventeenth. But uh, you know, I, I'm gonna just go out there and I'm gonna do the job this time. That's that's my motivation. It's, I, I do this. Boxing is not a easy job at all. You get we getting punched in the face, getting punched in the head, training, you know, to to make a living. And uh, you know, it's it's not an easy sport. So I just want to go out there and um, do what I have to do because you know it's a big fight for my career. It's, it's definitely a big setback fight if I don't come out victorious. So that's my motivation right there. And I hate that question, you know, what's your game plan for your next fight? But let's go around that a little bit and just ask, is there things that you noticed in the first fight that you have to work on to go ahead and apply on the second fight? Uh, absolutely. I mean, without giving up my, my game plan, obviously, clearly, you you know, you always work on being a better defensive fighter. And that's um, one of the things that my camp and I, my training and I, we definitely, you know, putting extra emphasis on. Not saying that we didn't put emphasis on that in the first in the first fight, but sometimes I guess you got to, you know, go through some things before that light clicks. And uh, it's definitely quick. So uh, I'm excited, man. I'm excited about this fight, and uh, I feel that I've gotten a lot better, and um, I'm excited to show to show that growth. And the Barclays Center, you know, is a great uh, place to fight. Yesterday, you know, was a host for that fight, that big fight with Zab Judah and Danny Garcia. How excited are you to fight in that particular arena there in Brooklyn, New York? I'm um, very excited. Um, you know, I, I haven't been there, and I've seen a couple of fights on TV, and people tell me that the atmosphere is uh, is electric in there. So I want to be a part of that electricity and um, get the people to stand on their feet and you know and scream, you know, when I'm in when I'm in there fighting. So uh, I'm, I'm excited for the day to come. And if you were to throw it out there and tell what I call the three big guests, your fans your family, your friends, how would you tell them, what would you tell them about this upcoming fight with Seth Mitchell? Oh, man, that this it's a must-see. Uh, the, the, I'm growing up in front of your eyes. You know, it's going to be, you know, I'm still going to bring the Seth Mitchell to the table, but it's just going to be a smarter Seth Mitchell. Um, and it's a, it's a must-see fight, man. And uh, my, my fans, they're anxious. They're itching every time I'm, I'm walking out. I'm walking around on Facebook and on Twitter. When you get back in the ring, can't wait to see you fight, champ. And uh, so I'm excited and I'm motivated. And uh, it's, it's just a, a must-see event. And, and it's nothing like, you know, redemption, getting getting revenge back. And um, that's just that's my main focus right now. June 22nd, Seth Mitchell versus Jonathan Banks, the rematch. Seth, thank you very much for returning to TheBoxingBar.com. Thank you very much, and good luck to you, my man. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.